Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.11, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 13, JDAM's Target of Opportunity Mode. This follows on from the previous tutorial, where I demonstrated pre-planned mode for the JDAM. Um, this Target of Opportunity Mode is a simpler method of deploying the weapon. Uh, however, it's only possible to drop um, a single weapon against a single target of opportunity at a time. Although a little bit later in the video I will demonstrate a way of quickly flipping between targets. So it, it is possible to get multiple drops in a single pass, but uh, not in an automatic fashion. You do have to do a bit of, uh, a bit of manual work to have that happen. So, as I said in the previous video, the F-18 can carry the GBU-38, which is a 500-pound class weapon. It can carry the GBU-31, which is a 2,000-pound class weapon. And it can carry the GBU-32, which is a 1,000-pound class weapon. Uh, each of these can be carried individually on the, uh, the wing pylon stations. So, that's 8, 7, 3, and 2. Um, and you can see here, demonstrated the maximum GBU-38 load using the BRU-55 rack. Only the GBU-38 can be carried on this rack. So uh, with GBU-38s, you can carry a maximum of 8. For all the other types, uh, GBU-31s and GBU-32s, you can only carry a maximum of 4. So, uh, you can see also I'm carrying the AT Fleur pod here as before. That's going to be important because that's what I'm going to use to generate my TOO point. So what does it mean to operate a JDAM in target of opportunity mode? Well, with the pre-planned mode, we had the ability to set multiple uh, mission points and have the bombs hit those. Uh, and in the case of the GB38, we could drop four of them uh, in a single pass. Actually, it'd be the same for the 32 and the 31, actually. You drop a maximum of four bombs all at the same time against four different targets. In target of opportunity mode, you're using your air-to-ground designated point, what you would call the SPI in the A-10. And of course, you can only have one of those. Uh, the aircraft only ever has a single air-to-ground designated point, so we can only drop in target of opportunity one weapon... Well, actually, we could drop multiple, but it'd be against the same point. But uh, in principle, one weapon against one target at a time. So, let's look at what exactly this looks like. Uh, I'm going to look down a little bit, hide my pilot, hide the stick, and check the initial setup. Uh, for this, we're going to want to make sure the FLIR pod is on, because I'm going to use uh, the AT FLIR pod to designate the target. We don't need the laser designator or the laser spot search, uh, because JDAMs simply use uh, inertial and GPS guidance. They don't use a laser at all. Yeah, I've already got the master arm on, we're going to go in air to ground master mode, uh, and because we've got GBU-38s on, the weapon profile is labelled J82. So I'm going to select that, and as before we have the timer counting down as the weapons go through their alignment. Um, and we've got the alignment quality displayed here. If I went into JDAM display, I'd get more information here about that alignment. But uh, let's press J82 and go back to the store's management system. We've got the mode of operation, defaults to pre-planned, and we're going to press this and switch to target of opportunity. And we're going to set the electronic fuse to instantaneous. And that's all the basic setup for the weapon. We would now be able to go ahead and do a drop like that. So, let's choose our very first target. On the right multifunction display here, I'm going to go menu, FLIR, and bring up the, the FLIR pod. I'm going to press sensor select, switch to the right. I've now got my diamond. I'm going to double depress, uncage, and now my pod is facing forward. And I'm going to use the TDC to slew it downwards. Uh, and we've got that little triangle there uh, indicating our current waypoint. I'm going to let those clouds get out of the way. I'm just taking us out of active pause for a moment. And then back into active pause. Okay, so let's take a little look here. In the area of waypoint one, I've got a series of targets as before. I'm actually going to switch to FLIR because I'll probably get a slightly clearer image here. Let's zoom all the way in. Let's choose our favorite um, structure here. Now, currently we're just in inertial mode. I could push sensor select switch to the right or in the direction of whichever DDI I'm using currently to switch between the different tracking modes. So if I press it once here, I've got scene track, which is what we'd probably use for a structure like this. If I press right again, I get automatic, which would be uh, synonymous with point track in other systems. Uh, I'm going to leave it in the scene track. Now, I haven't set my air-to-ground designation point yet, 
Uh, but if I press TDC depress, well, actually, I guess it already did when I set the tracking mode. But press TDC depress just to confirm that you're doing that. You get a set of coordinates here at the top right. That's your target. And you also have a range to that target on the right hand side of AT Fleur. If we look up on the HUD, you're going to see a range to the target and confirmation that the target coordinates are coming from the FLIR just now. If I look at the store's management system, I'm going to bring up the JDAM display and bring up the mission page. And here again, we have a set of coordinates and it's confirming that's what we're going to actually attack. Uh, the TOO UFC setting here would allow us to set heading, angle and velocity for those terminal parameters. Uh, but as I said in the previous uh, video, these parameters are rather bugged. They, they do work, but the, the problem is that uh, the reduction in range is not visualized uh, on the HSI. So they're very, very hard to use. I would recommend not using them. Uh, and as before, we can step and we can undefine the heading and so on here as well. But uh, yeah, all we want to do is, is confirm that that looks correct. 35, 16, 45... Uh, yeah, funnily enough, here it's displaying it in decimal, there it's displaying it in uh, seconds with, with the decimal. So uh, different systems, although actually we could, I think we can change the pod. Uh, let me see here, if I go to setup, and who do we change the, the actual coordinates? Lat long, grid, oh yeah, okay, or all, okay, yeah, so we can't actually change that. Fair enough. But yes, we, we know that we've got the same target location. As before, if we look down at the HSI, we have the launch acceptable region, and we also have the uh, launch acceptable region zone as well. Uh, I'm going to continue inbound, and I'm going to drop this weapon. Uh, and you know the, the, the way it's done is exactly the same way as we demonstrated before for uh, the pre-planned mode. So we've got this timer telling us uh, how long until we're in the region. I'm actually just going to accelerate time because we've got other things to demonstrate as well. Five seconds until we're within the region. In range. In zone. Okay. Press and hold pickle and GBU away. And now the bomb needs no further input from the aircraft. The target coordinates were downloaded into it. It's now guiding fully autonomously towards our chosen target. Down it goes. Direct hit. There you go. So that's the basics of TOO mode. Whatever your currently designated air to ground target is, that's where the bomb is going to go. Now, Let's say you've been given a series of targets in some kind of a CAS mission, and you want to be able to do multiple TOO drops in quick succession. How do you do that? Well, give me one moment to reset the aircraft, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, you join me back in the cockpit, and now I'm going to demonstrate multiple JDAM drops using TOO in a single pass against different targets. Um, so if you're doing a, a CAS mission, it might be the case that you're given uh, multiple targets uh, and you, you don't want to, or for whatever reason, can't take the time to enter those uh, as pre-planned targets. So let's see what we can do just using the FLIR pod. So once again, let's get the FLIR pod looking down here at our target area. We've selected our first target that we want to destroy. Let's uh, TDC depress. I've got that designated. And now using the HSI, I'm going to press the mark point button and I'm going to create mark point one. Done. Now I'm going to slew the pod over the next target. TDC depress, create mark point two. Over the third one, depress, mark point three. And then over our fourth target, depress, mark point four. We now have four mark points. Uh, let's have a little look at these on the HSI. So if I go out of that mode and I go down on the waypoints, we get to the nine mark points that we have. I've designated mark points one, two, three. So you'll see that we've got little circles for each one. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. And what we can do is for each one of these in turn, we can use the waypoint designate function. Uh, and we can have the 
the targeting pod, the AT Fleur, to actually um, confirm that we're looking at the correct target. So uh, over here on the stores management page, make sure that we're in target of opportunity mode and actually step over each bomb and make sure that all of them are set to TOO because otherwise as you cycle through them, uh, you're going to end up in pre-planned mode and electronic fuse instantaneous as before. So we can kind of monitor this to make sure it's working by bringing up the JDAM display and then bringing up the mission page. So with the mission page up and mark point one selected, we can press waypoint designate. We get all the symbology and the target information and the AT Fleur confirms our target. We would then pickle. Next, we go to mark point two, waypoint designate. Again, we confirm all the details and pickle. Mark point three, waypoint designate. You can visually see here we've got it. Coordinates are here, the LAR is displayed, pickle, away it goes. Mark point four, waypoint designate, and the same. So you understand the process, let's do it for real. I'm gonna choose mark point one, waypoint designate it, because that will be our first target. So let's come out of active pause and continue inbound. And let's drop some GBUs in TOO mode. 10 seconds. Okay, in range, in zone, pickle and GBU away, mark point two, designate, pickle and GBU away, number three, waypoint designate, pickle, mark point four, waypoint designate, pickle. Okay, that's four away against four different targets in target of opportunity mode. Let's monitor the drop and make sure that everything happens as it should. Okay, let's bring the speed down. Let's set the camera. Boom, boom, boom. And a boom. There you go. Four mark points, four JDAMs, four targets destroyed. Excellent. So, that's a, a full demonstration of how to do a simple TOO attack with the JDAM and a more complex one using mark points and waypoint designation. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment, and I'll see you all next time.